Hello and welcome back to the channel for another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about all the division style and type of questions that are going to be coming up on the Year 6 Arithmetic Test Paper. The questions I'm going to be talking about are questions from the 2022 paper, so last year's paper. And I'm going to talk through all the different ways we teach children to solve division questions when we're teaching them in school. So let's begin. The first question that I've chosen is question four. So this question is probably, I think it's the first division question that comes up on the paper. And this question is really asking the children to use their known facts. Now, what I mean by that is they could attempt this question using short division and draw the bus stop and write 2,400 underneath, okay, and do it this way. However, the paper is 30 minutes long and there are some questions which take quite a while. This type of question, to do it this way, might not be the fastest or most efficient way. So what I would say to them is, what do you know about the numbers 2 and 24? What relationship do you know about those numbers? Well, if we ignore these two zeros for the moment, ignore that this is 2,400 and just look at it as tw um, 24 divided by 2, well, 24 divided by 2 is 12. Okay, and that's what I mean by using their known facts, their division facts, knowing that two 12s are 24 and, and the opposite. Then I've got my answer of 12, okay? But then I have to then think about these two zeros that I've taken away. So essentially, I divided the answer by 100. So I then have to multiply this answer by 100. And if I do that, if I put those two zeros back on, then I'm given a final answer of 1,200 and I can write the number in the box provided. Now, if you did it using short division and you did it using this method, you would get the same answer. But I tried to show the children fast and efficient methods to attempt these types of questions because there are other questions which do take a little longer. All right, let's move on. OK, so again, this is another question like the last, which is asking the children to use their division facts. But they also have the added tricky difficulty of the fact that the equal sign is in the middle of this question and not at the end, which can throw some children off. But what I say to them is, and I've said this in other videos as well, is that the, the equal sign is like a balance or weighing scale. Whatever this side equals must equal this side. In other words, if I do 24 divided by 8, then the answer must be equal. So Essentially, I just say, do the question as normal and write your answer over here. Now, again, you could get the children to do 24, 240 divided by 8 and draw it out like this. Whoops. 240 divided by 8 and draw it out like this. However, um, that's probably not the fastest or most efficient method. So um, just ignore this zero for the time being. Use your division facts. So what is 24 divided by 8? OK, and if you know, if the children know their division facts, which is why it's so important to know their times tables, they should know that 3 8 are 24. So 24 divided by 8 is going to give you 3. But don't forget that you took 10 away. You divided by 10, so you need to times that by 10 or add the 0 back on, leaving you with a final answer of 30. And please make sure you write the answer in the box provided. Because if they if they do all the working out and forget to write the answer in here, they might not get the question correct. OK, moving on to the next question. Um, here we've got uh, 804, 840. And we're going to divide that by 5. OK, so for this question, um, it isn't obvious that 840 is in the 5 times table. Because most numbers that are in the five times table end in five or zero. This number does end in zero. So I would say to the children, well, it is probably going to be a whole number, this answer, because any any times table, any number that ends in five or zero is in the five times table. So, uh, But I would encourage them to use short division for this because um, you, can't, you can't always do, you know, eight into five into eight. Yeah, so short division works best for this type of question. So how many fives go into eight? Um, it goes in once with a remainder of uh, three. 
Okay, so how many fives into 34? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 35 is too big, so it's going to go in six times. And it's going to have a remainder of four, which then leaves us with fives into 40, which is great because it's a whole number. Five times eight is 40, so it's going to be eight, which leaves us with a final answer of 168. And they could, if they want to check their answer, they could do 168 times 5, and they should get 840, but I don't think that's necessary in this case. But remember to get them to write the answer in the box provided. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Okay, so this one, I chose this one because, uh, similar to the other questions, it should be a really quick question for them to do. Ignoring the zero, what's 56 divided by 7? This is why they need to know their times tables. So 56, if I divide that by 7, okay, 7 eighths of 56, so the answer is going to be 8. But then I've got a 0 here, so I need to add the 0 back on, which means my final answer is going to be 80. All right, this question doesn't require them to do lots of short division or anything like that. It's just a case of them knowing their division facts, which is why it's so important for them to learn those multiplication tables and those division facts. All right, so the answer for that one was 80. And now we've got a larger number divided by nine. Now this is a question that requires short division. So I'm gonna put the nine on the outside of the bus stop and the 1080 is gonna go underneath. So um, once I've set this out and laid it out as this, as it should be, I'm now going to go through and do my division. So 9 into 1, okay? You can't put 9 into 1, so I'm going to put a 0. And what we can do is you draw this little line here to show that you're making this 10. How many 9s in 10? Well, it goes in once, and there's going to be one remainder, so the 1 goes next to the 8. How many 9s in 18? You're going to have 2, which is a nice whole number. How many 9s in 0? You're going to have 0 leaving you with a final answer of 120. And let's remember to write the number in the box provided. Okay, so that was just a short division question number 13. Right, number 16 is slightly different. And just like with multiplication, we're dividing, we have to, children have to know how to divide by 10, 100, and 1,000 and multiply by 10, 100, and 1,000. Now, if you're multiplying, the numbers would move this direction to the left. But if you're dividing, they're going to get smaller and they're going to move to the right. And if we're dividing by 10, then I say to the children, the numbers are going to move one jump. Now, what I mean by that is for this type of question, even if they've learned to move the decimal point or they've learned... Now they can do it in their head. I encourage all children to draw one of these, a place value chart. Not neatly, doesn't need to take long, just quickly do it. Okay, and then put in your columns. So we know we're working with decimal numbers here. So I'm going to have um, my tens, my ones, my decimal point would be here. Then I've got tenths, hundredths, and what we call thousandths going down here. Not thousands, thousandths and hundredths, okay, and tenths, okay. Now I'm going to put my numbers into my place value chart. So 2.12, and this is what I would show and ask the children to do. We're dividing by 10, one jump to the right. So the two goes in here. The one is going to move to the hundredths column. The two is going to move from the ones into the tenths column. Um, if they write 212, that would be a wrong answer. They have to show it's a decimal number. So to do, in order to do that, you write 0 0.212. So I'm going to write that here, 0 0.212. Okay, and that's my final answer. And make sure that you write the answer in the box provided. So that's dividing by 10. Okay, get them to draw out their place value chart. Next question is our first of the long division questions. Now, these types of questions do they take the children a little while to solve. And for that reason, they are asked to show their method and they are also two mark questions, which means that even if they get the answer wrong, if they've shown they're working, they should get, if the working is accurate, 
they should get at least one mark, okay? Now, what I say to the children before attempting this question, before trying to divide anything, we need to know what the 21 times tables is. So we can see how many 21s go into this number. So we call this jottings, okay? And the child, the first step is to make your jottings. So long division, you must, you must write jottings. So 21 times one is 21. 21 times two is two times 20 is 40. Two times one is 42, okay? Um, in this case, the jottings are fairly easy. 21 times 3 is going to be 20 times 3, which is 60. And 1 times 3, which is 63. 21 times 4 is going to be 2 times 4, which is 80. And 1 times 4, which is 4. 21 times 5 is going to end in 5 or 0. 20 times 5 is 100. And 1 times 5 is 4. Five, so 105. Now with the jottings, I tend to tell them to go to about seven times. Okay, so the reason is because it's usually with these long division questions, you need about seven times that number to, to help you solve it. Okay, so then six times 21 is going to be uh, 20, 20 times six is 120. And then one times six, so it's 126. There's also nothing wrong when you're doing a jottings is also doing a little bit of short division as well. So what I mean by that is if you can't add it and you can't uh, multiply it in your head, you know, like 21 times 7, nothing wrong with the children doing that this way. 1 7 is 7, 2 7s are 14. Okay, so we go from 126 to 147. There's nothing wrong with doing that. In fact, I encourage this. So now we've got our jotting. We've got one times, two times, three times, four times. Oh, sorry. I'm just. I'm not going to bother writing those in actually. But if you can see, that's one times twenty-one, two times twenty-one, three times four times five times six times seven times. Right. My jottings are there. Now I can go ahead and solve this. Now these longer questions. That's why I was saying with the with the shorter questions, try to do them quickly because these longer questions do take a bit of time. Right, 21 into 6, you can't do, so we're going to put a 0. 21 into 67, though, so how many times is that going in? 1 times, yeah, 2 times, it goes in 3 times. So you write 63 down here, and you draw a line, okay? But you also need to write down how many times it went in, so it went in 3 times. So we put the 3 up there. The next bit is to subtract, so 7 take away 3 is 4. And 6 take away 6 is 0. Now, this is the first bit that the children think, oh, no, what do I do next? Do I do 21 into 4? That doesn't work. I'm not sure what to do. So what you do is you tell them to bring the next number down. Bring the 2 down. So now we're doing 21 into 42. And the reason I love long division is usually on the SATs, the questions work out beautifully with no remains or anything. How many times does 21 go into 42? Up. Oh, it goes in twice, which gives me two there. And then just to be sure, I'm going to put 42 underneath. I'm going to take that away. Zero, four take away four, zero. So there's no remainder at all, which is beautiful, isn't it? I love long division when it works out like this. So give me a final answer of 32. Now, I know I've written my jottings over the top of the box, but just make sure when your child does it in the SATs, they write the jottings over here or somewhere else. So they can write the final answer, which in this case is 32 in the box provided. OK, so that's long division. And I'm going to finish off with a long division question. Um, this is probably the hardest question, one of the hardest questions on the arithmetic paper, simply because the time it takes and also because the jottings are going to be hard. So my jottings are going to go here. And this time we're looking at the 73 times table. OK which is a lot more difficult. So um, you could ask them to add 73 and 73 together. But as I said to you before, I quite just like doing little jottings on the side here. So 73 times 2, 2 3s are 6, 2 7s are 14. So my next one's going to be 146. OK. And then I'm going to do 73 times 3. 3 3s are 9. 7 3s are 21, 
So my next one is 219. And I'm just going to keep going until I do seven times. So 73 times four. Three, seven, three times four is 12. Seven fours, carry the one, sorry. Seven fours are 28 and one is 29. So 292. Okay. And then 73 times 5 is going to probably end in 5 or 0. 3 fives are 15, 5 down, carry the 1. 7 fives are 35, and 1 is 36. So it's going to be 365. Two more jottings, and then we can start to solve this. So uh, 73 times 6. Three sixes are 18, eight down, carry the one. Seven times six is 42 and one is 43. Getting up to some really big numbers now. 438 is your six times. And we'll do one more just to be safe. 73 times seven. Three sevens are 21, one down, carry the two. Seven sevens are 49. Add 2 is 50, 51. Okay, so that means that 7 times is 511. Right, that's taken a long time, but it's worth spending the time doing it, okay? So 73 into 30, into 3 we can't do, so put a 0 there. 73 into 30, can't do. So we're going to do 73 into 306. So how many times does that go in? Once, twice. Three times, four times, goes in four times. I'm going to put the four there. And I'm going to put my number, which is 292, underneath. Six take away two is four. Zero take away nine I can't do. So I'm going to take from there. That becomes two, which becomes ten. Ten take away nine is one. And two take away two is zero. Now, leaves me with 14. So I'm going to bring the six down, which leaves me with 146. And just like I said to you before, I love long division because it works out really nice with no remainder. 73 into 146 goes in twice. Okay, and just to be sure, I'm going to put 146 underneath and take that away. Zero. Four, take away four, zero. One take away one is zero. Leaving with a final answer of 42. Okay. And again, if you're, you wouldn't ask, you wouldn't get your child to write the jottings here because they want to be able to write their correct, correct answer in the box provided. And in this case, the correct answer is 42. Okay. So that's the last division question that I'll be covering today. Um, I've covered all the different types of division questions that are likely to come up on the on the SATs paper for arithmetic and um, the methods that we teach in school to help them solve those questions. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel for more videos on primary education and join me in the next video where I'll be talking about all the ways where we and all the different types of fractions questions and how to solve them on the arithmetic paper. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.